Yes. yes. Okay. Um, so what we're going to work on uh, tonight is the emerging strategic plan trends. And I will tell you that David White did a excellent job of kind of synthesizing that in a qualitative uh, way. I did it in a quantitative way. So we'll do some comparisons and see how that works out. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, the merged survey questions. And I'm not prepared for this tonight because I spent too much time on the other, but we'll certainly talk about it. Uh, we will talk a little bit about the mission statement tonight, whether we leave it the same or we change it up. Um, I'm hoping that either Lane, Lisa, or David can talk with our design team a little bit tonight about the habits of heart, mind, and work, how that really plays out in kind of day-to-day -day, uh, lessons and uh, standards and all of that. Uh, we're going to begin to talk a little bit about what the strategic plan might look like and a little bit about uh, what the goal implementation model might look like. And I know that uh, you are busily either finalizing or will soon sign a lot, finalize an agency of ed COVID recovery plan. Uh, can you tell me where you are with uh, with that, excuse me, with that process? That's probably more a David um, or Lisa question. I don't know if Lane is on tonight. I, I, I can say that we started to meet the process last Wednesday and we're getting back and, and we're waiting for more information to continue that process. I think it's on our cabinet schedule for next Wednesday, not for tomorrow. Okay. All right, if you would uh, just remember me when you're doing that and please send me even in draft form what that looks like because in year one implementation of your strategic plan, I wanna make sure that we have an alignment between where you're going over the next six months or year and where the strategic plan is going to go in the first of three years. Because it doesn't make much sense to have the strat plan going one direction and the COVID recovery going in a different one. Yeah, I'll make sure uh, that Lane gets that information. Okay. And then we'll review timeline and next steps. And you'll see that our next meeting is on uh, the 22nd at 6.30. So what we don't get done tonight, uh, we'll save for, for next week. So let us take a look at this uh, little beauty here. And I'm gonna blow this up a bit. Let's see. Yeah. Uh, so you can see that most people had an opportunity to finish. And what I've done is, uh, as I've done the tabulation, this is like golf, low score wins. So I've just, I've just bolded the, the, bottom, the bottom three scores here. So you can see under, under knowledge, skills, and tools, what we're looking at is, um, know how to settle conflicts with peers and adults, problem solving and work ethic. That doesn't mean that the other, the other items go away. What it means is those are a little bit more important. And so I'd like you to think about, uh, it's a little hierarchy here. Um, we're gonna have a mission statement. We're going to have some goals underneath that. And they're gonna be goals that uh, administration and teachers do, and then they're gonna be the higher arching policy governance goals that the board does. And so uh, I'm still working through that. I'm gonna rely a lot to, with Ann and with Lane about that uh, to make sure that we keep everything in, in the appropriate uh, kind of role. Uh, policy governance just has a different uh, perspective on this. So operationally, a lot of the goals will fall on teachers and administrators. The higher level goals will be what, how the board monitors the operation of the system. And so in the, in the higher order goals, uh, think of them as an umbrella. And then underneath on each umbrella, there'll be some, we'll call them droplets or tentacles or however you want to characterize. Um, there'll be some lesser important actionable steps that go underneath. And so that's one way to think about how we might move forward. So going back to this, 
Uh, any surprises here on knowledge, skills, and tools middle school uh, students need? And I'm going to need uh, Ann or David or someone just facilitating, or Kelsey, someone just to be my eyes because I'm behind the uh, the curtain here. I can't see you. Any surprises here? Gus, you have your you had your hand uh, raised. Is it is it has it come down? Uh, I just brought it down because it's about a further question. So if we're going to go through them one by one, I'm happy to hold my question until we get to the one I want. Okay. Any any other thoughts on the first one? Okay. Well, let's take a look at the second one. And this is social emotional skills. And so the big three are take personal responsibility, perseverance, and acceptance of others' differences. Any thoughts or issues here? No surprises. I, I just have a question. So we're 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 narrowing this down to the top three. Yeah. Um. Is there a reason for that? Just the top three, or are you just because we have to narrow it some way? We we have to narrow it some way. Uh, doesn't mean that we won't be including all of them in some in some respects, but there needs to be some prioritization. And it won't be as blatantly obvious on some of these as it will when we have um, kind of longer statements like, what should the middle school do to ensure students feel physically safe? And we're looking at monitor science for mental health, ensure a safe space for learning, debate, and ideas, and then clear reporting system for student complaints. And maybe another way, to talk about this. Let me go to David White's. I don't think David can be with us tonight. So that's why, yes, that's why he um, he worked on this uh, a couple of days ago, sent it to me, and I asked his permission that we can share this tonight. These might be the really big uh, umbrellas, so to say, uh, more life skills in the curriculum, strengthening the transition from elementary to middle, increasing the workload in the middle school, uh, separation of middle school and high school physically with walls, uh, classroom culture, diversity, uh, ensuring that we keep the advisory model, career options, and create more developmental opportunities. If you think about these, and we'll spend a little bit of time tonight with, the, as I, you've often heard me say, the mergers and acquisitions, nine might be too many umbrellas or tree limbs, whatever the symbolism that you can best think about kind of the higher order uh, placeholders. In fact, maybe let's just spend a little bit of time right now looking at this. Would you merge any of these into a, um, a higher order? category. Let's look at those again. You've got a curriculum focus. You've got a transition. If we were to pick kind of one word in each of these, this is a, this is a curriculum uh, umbrella. This would be transition. Uh, this would be workload. Uh, this is, this is really a, uh, well, this is a facility. I'm just going to, just for now, do this, just to give us something we can kind of get our arms around. But I think, but I think that's a culture thing. Not, that's not, I mean, yeah, it, it, building the walls the way it's stated, but really it's a culture. You really want to have that divide. And so I, I actually think that that, that um, separation might go down with, classroom culture or middle school culture just lump them all together okay uh and, is there a middle school? The, and throwing the advisory model in there might be part of that culture also uh you, you could that's, what I'm, that. that's what i'm looking for okay would, so, would, just, would workload would workload go up with curriculum because it's really talking about sort of the, the uh, strength yes. of the curriculum or the, the... How do you feel about it? Does that make sense? 
Yes. Okay. Because workload might be debatable. Okay. But but if they're teaching to the standards, it's not. And career oh. options could go under curriculum as well. What do you think? Good idea. Can I ask a quick question? Yeah. Um, not to poison the well or uh, or detract from David's work here, but um, David White's work that is. Um, just looking, I was just surprised to see the the building a wall between them as as a high priority on this because when I look at the the scoring and I remember when I did it, that was uh, that was pretty low down. So I'm just. Um, I'm a little troubled by us basing our our analysis here on on one person's qualitative analysis, and I really think it would be. I, I feel it would be better if we, as a group, kind of arrived at these conclusions together rather than using one person's opinion as a start point. Okay. It does that. I so I don't I don't want to just throw the baby out with the bathwater here, but I just um, if we're going to do this as a team, I'd rather I'd rather, rather we did it as a team. If I'm the only one, then you know I'll back off. How do others feel about that? Uh, this is Gus, and I do agree that there should be a cultural, I don't want to say divide, but uh, some sort of difference between middle school and high school. It doesn't have to be a physical wall, but like what um, David Roller just said, like maybe it could be a cultural wall or a, like a series of routines or something that directs kids in a different direction so that they are they feel like they're their own community. Um, and can develop as as a community, I think, which I okay. think goes with what Richard just said as well, perhaps, as opposed to having a wall or, I mean, that all sounds great. Like, how do you do that? And we all know that building and mm, that's not easy. So, no. but definitely the middle school needs its own identity. Okay. Well, let's, let's go with the, what Richard said. Let's work through the quantitative analysis and see if there's an alignment between what the numbers say and what uh, David White's assumptions were from looking at it in a qualitative standpoint. Does that, that make sense? Yes. yes. Okay. All right. So here we are. Uh, we're on the second one, uh, physically, emotionally, and intellectually safe. We've got uh, monitoring signs for mental health, ensure safe space for learning and debate of ideas, and clear reporting system for student complaints. Any surprises, any conversation here? Okay. Okay, I, I'm sorry, but, I, but I'm shocked actually that, that uh, maintaining consistent classroom routines throughout the middle school ended up it's so low. I, I be, because I I just I don't philosophically I don't understand that okay. where it, where you, why you wouldn't prioritize consistency. Well, remember that we've got a real mix of students, of parents, of business leaders. Um, I'm just my opinion. Yep. No. Fair enough. Yep. Why don't I do this? Why don't I? with ones like this, just to differentiate, I'm gonna, oh, won't let me underline, I'll, I'll do it italicized with a, with a question mark. Well, oh, and, and that, to me, I didn't rate really high because I was like, if you're a teacher, that kind of goes with the territory. So I was sort of like, okay, a teacher's gonna do that. <laughs> so okay, I'm, all right. I'm, yeah, and I, that's kind of am what I was thinking too. I think about like the teams, and it's just I think about consistency among the team, and that like you know developmentally, seventh grade is different than eighth, and if sixth grade was there, they're different than eighth, and just that it, it felt maybe a little bit micromanaging, where it's like of course we had expectations, but they're they're thoughtfully developed at the grade level or the team base, you know, and like a an arts class is different than a math class. And so just like trying to be flexible in that sense, like we don't want like too rigid because that's not how middle school kids succeed necessarily. So that's kind of like where my rationale of like not putting it in the one, two, three. Okay. 
I agree right. with that, a lot of what's been said there. I think sometimes it was dis- difficult because there were lots of things that we think are really good that we feel bad about ranking low. Um, <laughs> I, I, I really prioritize stuff where it was a good idea that we hadn't really tried. Whereas David, you're absolutely right about consistency, but you know that's like we said, that's a given. Um, if we're not doing that, then we're not really doing our jobs. So. Um, and there were also, in some of these, there were some where it felt like they doubled up. So I'd, it would feel like we ranked one high, but something that meant almost the same thing came quite low. Okay. All right. This is perfect. This is the kind of dialogue that's important. I think that historically, the lack of consistency has been a problem in lots of different places. And, and, and I'm not talking about micromanaging people. I'm just yeah. saying literally having teams you know, sitting and talking and being in the same place. And and it's a mistake, again, my opinion, not to have it somewhere stated. Okay. I, I don't think it's a given. I truly don't think it's a given. I think it disappears the second you stop valuing it and talking about it. Okay. I do wonder if that one was in the wrong place almost because it's what should the middle school do to ensure students feel physically emotionally and intellectually safe and it it feels a little bit I mean I don't know where else to put it but I do remember going through that and I was thinking about you know there maybe there's a different spot that it would would have scored higher if it was in a different spot so I do think because I was like from our discussion I remember thinking they really need a clear reporting system for complaints. And that was something we talked about in my group. And so like, it was hard to score that one high when there were other things in that category. So maybe we'll find something some to put it somewhere else. Well, would it, would it fit under curriculum? I don't think it really does fit under curriculum. I mean, it does fit in an area with students feeling safe. I mean, we know that feeling safe is an intrinsic part of what you need to learn. And those consistent routines and knowing what to expect. I mean, students have all different experiences outside of school. And it, it, it does feel like it's our job to create, you know, that expected environment so that they can come in and, and do their best work. Um, I do agree with David, it's really puzzling that it didn't score higher um, because it feels like that should be a foundational systemic value. Okay. I'll well, make sure know. that... What that, about the next category down? What now? The next category down. Um, I don't know about anyone else, but it looks to me like it might fit in there with collaboration and connections with adults. Well, let's put it there. Whoa. That- <laughs> has a big presence, doesn't it? I wonder if it could also be included under when we talk about the model, if that's part of the middle school model is to have that increased consistency. And maybe there's some specification around whether it's increased consistency of groups, increased consistency of routines, um, increased consistency maybe of all of those things. But I wonder if maybe model is part of if we're kind of developing a middle school model and saying consistency should should be an overwhelming part of that to help with, or not overwhelming, but excuse me, a, a, a helpful part of that to create a team if, if maybe that works there. So you're saying in this one, number five, yeah, I, I mean, again, I, I don't think it's necessarily wrong where it is, but I wonder if in that category yeah. it might have gotten a little bit more of a, um, a a better grading from some of us that maybe were not understanding okay. kind of what was being Im- implemented there. Well, get, given what I'm hearing, uh, this is all of a sudden risen to a much, um, in, in golf vernacular, much lower score, which means higher priority. Uh, so I will make sure that uh, that that is prominent uh, in uh, in, in one of the uh, action action step areas. All right, great conversation. Let me find our way back here. I also would just like to point out that I think some of what's challenging, like even if we go back to that first question is some of the answers are very broad and really don't give any directive towards creating like a plan with them. Like when we say oh, like yeah. ensure safety and it's like, but how and in which yeah. ways? And I don't know if we're supposed to be doing that, but so it made it harder sometimes to score too because you're like, I could fit six yeah. of these under that one category in some regards. Well, we'll, we'll get there. These these are just teasers that uh, get us in the ballpark. Let's say it gets us to first base. We'll work as a design team and I'll go back and forth and do some wordsmithing and some mergers and acquisitions and come back to you with 
uh, some statements that are more like David's. Uh, so um, I hear you. All right, I think we're in two. Let's keep going here. So in strong collaboration and connections with adults, um, create student relationships with at least one adult, promote student growth mindset, and strengthen connections between parents and schools rose to the top. Um, in our quantitative analysis, did we miss anything? Okay. So if I'm hearing you correctly, we're, sorry, that's so loud. Um, we're not supposed to be grouping anything together yet, right? Correct. Okay. Well, talk to me. What are, what are you thinking? I was just seeing the implement social emotional curriculum and the promote student growth mindset could go together because it could be a curriculum around growth mindset. M meaning merging these two together? Is that what you're saying? Yes. Mindset with the one above it? The implement social emotional curriculum. Oh, I got it. I'm in the wrong place. The first one. All right. Yeah. Yeah, actually, yes, this is a good thing to be doing. Okay, perfect. And again, I'll clean this up later. Any other mergers and acquisitions while we're at it? I feel like there's a lot of commonalities between the um, connection between parents to schools, connection to larger community, possibly even the civics education one. I'm not sure exactly how you'd merge them or which you'd merge, but I feel like they're I feel like three of those could become two. All right. So tell me again. I um, just just the the connections between parents and schools, and then the connection to a larger community. I feel like those are uh, those are very much involved with each other. Um, although I wouldn't want to lose any part of either, if that makes sense, because yeah, they are different things, but they are very uh, they are very closely connected. Yeah. And I'm just going to make a note here that I've done that. Was there a third one with that? Um, I I I was wondering about the civics education part, just because of having that having that discourse between different institutions and different uh, parts of the education system and the wider public. But okay. that may, that may not be as connected. Okay, got it. Any other conversations need to be had here? Okay. Moving on, and that's changing a little bit, kind of our sequencing here, isn't it? Huh, okay. Well, where did I do my, oh, I, I didn't, no, I didn't get this one added up yet. So, let's see what happens if I do this. No, it's not going to do it, is it? Okay. Well, it looks like this one is a definite. And I'm just looking at the numbers. Looks like this one's a definite. Uh, and maybe this one here. All right. What do you, what, what say you about these? Those look right. If the view I'm seeing is correct, then it's off by a line. And I wonder if, um, what's the one I was looking at? I'm, I think curriculum that helps students think outside the world of Vermont looks like it has higher numbers than embed cultural awareness within curriculum. Okay. I, I, I'm just making sure that I'm seeing that correctly. Um, All right. So this is the fourth and this is the fourth. Oh yeah, you're right. And again, yeah. I think they're, they're similar in a lot of ways. So. 
Got it. All right. Let's go to the next. Again, as I was kind of finalizing the ones with a short number of responses, I just kind of eyeballed it and said, we can we can pull three out of there. So I would think, yeah. Before we go on, what exactly were we meaning by provide technology learning resources? Because I was I was struggling to remember what that actually meant. Well, again, that was somebody's uh, snippet or soundbite. Um, it was under integrated curriculum, so I would imagine it might have something to do with maybe virtual learning. Uh, I remember some conversations about continuing virtual learning and virtual communications after COVID. I remember hearing that middle school kids should do virtual connections with elementary students during the transition process. It, so it, it might be something like that. There's nothing in here. I haven't seen anything in here about teaching the use. Of, there was one that was like keyboarding skills, but it was like if they don't know keyboarding skills by the time they're in seventh grade, that's yeah. a problem almost. Although oh, yeah. I'm not sure when all of that happens. Well, I can grade. speak to that. It, it happens um, around about third to sixth grade. Um, I don't know about the other schools, but um, certainly in Brookfield, I expect the sixth graders to be at uh, 30 words a minute with about 95% accuracy by the time they leave. Really? And, yeah. and how about learning how to use email? Like, do you, is there direct instruction on how to, how to use? Yeah. Like in library class specifically, they do a, a lot of that stuff. Um, and we, I mean, particularly this year, it's been covered as a matter of course. In fact, uh, Mrs. Gilbert came to me this morning asking me for ideas because in terms of technological integration, she's actually run out of material because the kids have become so good at it this year. Oh. Huh. Okay. That's just for Brookfield, though. I can't speak for the other schools. All right. Well, I just, I'm just going to have to have us eyeball this because I can't shift them. When I did the cut and paste, it pulled everything up. And uh, if some. Because uh, I, I can do two things at one time, but I can't do three. Uh, so I think we're, are we on five? We're on technology. Oh, actually. This was a biggie. And I think this is, maybe we'll leave those at two. Uh, when I say netiquette, does everyone understand that that is um, etiquette using technology? That's uh, a term that's used. And if that isn't clear, then I can change that. So it's the same as like digital citizenship, essentially. Yes, exactly. exactly. Maybe that's better. That's a better term. I mean, I feel like that kind of lumps into, or very much something to teach internet safety. I mean, that's kind of part of being a good digital citizen. I feel like that's part of it. Oh, a good point. Safety so those could be merged. Yeah. All right. I'll do my mergers and acquisitions after we finish so I don't mess anything else up. All right. Let's go on to middle school continuing operating as it does now. Um, looks like the biggies are a great way to organize, having consistent, and there's more to that, more individualized student coaching and personalized goal setting, uh, which was this one. And parents need more information from advisors, which this one seems to be, looks like it's aligned. Okay, any, any thoughts, issues, questions, concerns here? Okay, moving on. Uh, this one is under curriculum. And again, I will merge these different curriculum statements together into one curriculum. So it's a process of kind of evolution. 
So it looks like STEM classes and special projects, student services dedicated, uh, student hmm, has a, met, a dedicated middle school counselor and recess breaks pre-K through 12. Richard, I think you're having some influence here. When you talk to us about UK schools, uh, it, it, uh, it's stuck. Any thoughts about this one? I'm a little surprised to see foreign language so far down huh. in, in the list. I guess I guess maybe community members are less interested in foreign language. It's all well, the research is you learn better at a younger age, and yet we continue to push it up to the. I think a tough part about foreign languages is that um, you can learn them and become almost fluent at the high school level, but if you end up not using that. Um, you lose it. I mean, that that was my experience of high school German when I was a kid. Um, mm -hmm. I can't speak German anymore because I haven't used it in 20 years. Um, so unless you're in a in a place where, if we were in a state where Spanish really was spoken as a second language by a huge amount of people, then it might it might stick. Uh, but I think that's another problem with Vermont being so um, lacking in diversity is there's just not the opportunity to use those languages. So that might be where people aren't valuing it. Well, and again, the the design team has, uh, I hate to use this term, has, has a trump card. Oh boy, what happened just here? Has a trump card. If you think something uh, should have a little bit of weight and you're surprised at it, uh, that's why we're having this conversation is I'm just going to uh, put it in italics so that um, it tells me maybe this is the fourth one or maybe this, uh, maybe the, uh, Maybe the analysis didn't uh, didn't tell the whole story. Can I ask why the sixth grader transition earlier isn't totaled? Uh, I just picked the ones that seem to have the low score. Do you think it should be in? Well, I, as far as I can see, the total is, I mean, I can't see the whole range, but perhaps the total is lower than some of the others that are totaled. Oh, I think you're right. It is. Which one is that? One, two, Didn't three. Did the springer transition earlier? I can't scroll your document. I keep trying. <laughs> yeah, I know. Did I just add the right one? I added the fourth one. So two, four. What? Tell me again what you're looking at. Begin the sixth grader transition earlier. Oh, down here. That one. Ah. Well, I can't see all the scores because I can only see G to Q on what's shared. Yeah. Um, I don't know what the total is, but that total is only 34. So I know a lot of parents want the parents. I mean, I teach sixth grade, so a lot of parents want transition to start earlier. So I was just really curious. Yeah, that's actually pretty close. Okay, got it. If you look at the whole one, though, there's a lot of 11s on the left hand side. I can't see that. I can't scroll his document. Um, you can still open it from the email from the other day if you want to get to it that way. Yeah, I'm really trying not to toggle eight documents at once. <laughs> I, oh, I you know what? I did. When I did that tabulation, I didn't go all the way over. Interesting. Let me go all the way over and see what we get. Uh, 75. That was pretty high. Yeah, so you can see that uh, some people are high. It actually, it's pretty high all the way across, except for a well, few. It looks like it's either really high or really low, which is really interesting. Yeah. Depending on who might have answered. Yeah, and I think I did this one wrong, and I didn't go all the way across. Winton, are we still aware that this is out of sync by a line, height-wise? I am, yes. And so keep me keep me honest here. I think there's a few we could combine in this one too, if we're looking like, I know they're not the top ones, but in terms of like offering outdoor activities, um, continued use of exploratory learning, um, you know, even that could be kind of, you know, grouped into the recess breaks and, and sort of those outside opportunities. So there is some room for, you know, combining a little bit with some of those. Okay. So tell me again, and I'm not going to do it because I don't want to wreck it. Tell me which so like ones. like it says, offer many outdoor activities, and there's like yeah. continued use of exploratory learning. 
Um, you know, I feel like those could kind of go under yeah. the recess break, the recess breaks, club activities during recess, like kind of that group of things goes together a little bit. Okay. Okay, got it. I'll do it this way, and that just gives me a gives me a placeholder. All right. Moving on. Uh, leadership models. Actually, these came in the wrong. So these really should have been yeah, here. They were, I, did, I did it in the wrong column because I didn't see okay. the place there. I was trying to get ahead of you. Oh, good. Thank you. So it looks to me like uh, this is one twenty one nineteen. This is one. So great. So those look okay to you all. And I'll just say I heard quite a bit of positive feedback about uh, the leadership model in middle school. And I'm not going to name any names, Lisa, but it sounds like you're doing good work. <laughs> and keep it up. All right, transition to planning from elementary to middle. Uh, let's see, so low score here is this one. And this one, two, three, four, five. Looks like this one. And this one here. Any thoughts on this? Any mergers and acquisitions on the transition planning elementary to middle? So I just want to on behalf of the red sixth grade teachers. We were super pleased with Lisa's visits to us which represented the interest of the seventh grade team as to getting to know the sixth grade students. We have not experienced that before. Um, and we have felt for, well, I've been involved with them for 15 years, it's been missing. And the interest itself, even though Lisa's visits did stall last week, which is perfectly understandable, um, were so valuable. And the interest itself in, hey, who are your kids? Like, what are they about? What's your language? Helped build a bridge. And we refer to it as building the bridge. Um, and we have always wanted the bridge. And that felt like a really great first step. And it doesn't have to always be Lisa visiting. I'm sure there are many other ways to build that bridge. But I just have to say that was so amazing. Perfect. It was wonderful. And I can't wait to get to visit Brookfield and Braintree, too. And I appreciate that. Thank you, Gus. Okay. Any other thoughts on this one? Okay. What about in the other category? Looks to me like this is one. And we're talking about down three, so this is one. And this one. So and honestly, you just it could all be categorized as building relationships. Uh -huh. Okay. Good. Got it. Some learning challenges uh, really up there as well, went in further down. Say that again. Uh, personal learning plans so looks like scored really low. Okay, got it. Yeah. Where where is the evolution of personal learning plans in Orange Southwest? Is it percolating in elementary, middle, and high school? Is one school ahead of others? What? Where are we? I can't speak to the elementary schools. Um, 
But at Randolph Union, it's built into the portfolio and portfolio defense process um, and the student-led com conference process. So students have an opportunity um, to work with their advisor, set goals, um, monitor those goals, report back to their families, um, set new goals, and then at their portfolio defenses, they report out um, to some of their current teachers, their advisor, and some of their future teachers about themselves. And did I capture everything that you said there, Lisa? I think it's Lisa. Yes. Um, I would also include student-led conferences, though, because that's really how we meet that um, that connection with the family piece of um, of personal learning plans. Okay. So I'm looking at what you're showing us, and I don't know if it's the whole range of scores, but it looks like one of the lowest scores is challenge day for female students. Do you guys know what that is? I think it's scored low because it's off a, a column. Oh, because I just wanted to say that with regard, I just have to speak up for all the girls in the entire sixth grade um, who, have experienced this. It is the absolutely most positive, most um, informational thing and developmental thing they have ever experienced. They did it hands-on last uh, two years ago, and this year it's going to be remote um, on the last Friday in March. And every single sixth grade girl that we have approached to sign up has signed up for it with high enthusiasm because most technical programs um, are sort of embraced by boys. So having it be a personal thing with girls is a really huge, huge thing. So I just wanted to clarify that that's what that is. That challenge day is actually a career day with the technical center or technical programs for the sixth grade girls. Okay. You got uh, it. You guess that's the, um, I, I've had much more boy heavy classes the past few years, but of the few girls that we've sent to that program, I've had nothing but phenomenal reports. So absolutely. They came back on cloud nine. I ran the bulldozer. I cut the cord. <laughs> I'm thinking of these other things like things. Those girls have never really wrapped their brains around and they were able to have hands on experiences. And it, I cannot, I cannot say how, how great it is. It is so great. Beautiful. This is why we're doing this. All right, let's go middle school transition to high school. Uh, looks like we've got crucial to have a step up day after COVID. Teachers establish clear expectations. Seniors talk with eighth graders about middle school portfolio. Any Anything missing here? Any surprises? Okay, and I think that's it. Winton, did we miss a chunk further up? I feel like there was a, quite a, a section we skipped over. Yeah, it seems like that. Yeah, I didn't see activities in team building and that's the part I wanted to speak to. Oh, okay. Uh, do you remember what number that was? Um, it was called activities in team building. And it was after number four. Here it is, got it. It looks like we stopped at MS facility. Uh, I think it's a facility. I think that's where we, we jumped. I think that's uh, the part where we started not uh, skipping stuff. So did we do this one? No, and I think there's some way further up we didn't do it either. Um, okay. Yeah, MS facility, continue recess after COVID. That's the first one that I don't remember doing. Um, okay. And feel free to collect. Oh no! Even above that, beg your pardon. Um, integrated curriculum. That's where we stopped. We didn't do that one. Ensure student-centered classrooms. We haven't done any of that. Oh my! All right. Stop me when I get to the place. Executive. Oh boy, we did skip a bunch. How did we get? How'd that happen? Wait a minute, that's the beginning. So we did executive functioning, we did curriculum. 
This is the safety. Sure. This one? Integrated curriculum is the one that we didn't do. That's the first one we didn't do. Uh, I think I'm going in the wrong direction. Oh, I right here. Got it. Got it. Thank you. Uh, 69, row 69. Got it. Got it. Okay. All right. So this is a header that you put in for the student-centered classrooms. Got it. Okay. So we're looking at student-centered classrooms, cultural awareness within the curriculum, and provide technology learning research. Hmm. Sorry, this yeah. Sorry, Dan, yeah, because Ann had a question about that. Yeah. All right. Like. So facility. Uh, continue recess after COVID. And I think this one is a highlighter as well. What are your thoughts here? That I'm, was the bit. I'm confused as to what the um, what you're highlighting. Is it the line with the number it's at, or something? No, it's it's one off. You see, all of these are one line higher than the numbers. So okay. this is the first one, and this one has 24. That has 21. So separate middle school totally from high school is the 24. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. That, that was the biggest concern of all parents when we began this discussion about two years ago about, you know, um, the middle school model and potentially bringing sixth graders up. You know, if, they, if there was one concern that outshone every other one that they had, that was the one. Mm. Uh -huh. Okay. And I think continue recess after COVID which I looks like it has a total of 21, was pretty much an experience that the middle school teachers had had this year, that yeah. we grade teachers were like, yeah, man, that's why it's so cool. So that yeah. was a really great connection for all of us. Yeah, I remember that. Okay, let's go on to middle school to ensure student, what's the rest of it? Students maintain a positive attitude about being successful, okay. So the, the biggies here are morning meetings, sets tone for school and routines, a learning environment for success with differentiated instruction, promotion of growth mindset, and celebrate student strengths and projects with families and communities. Any thoughts here? I think that would be <laughs> You think what now? I said, I think that is great. Okay. All right, let's go on to the next. Uh, students have a role in determining what success looks like. Now, how come I didn't? Oh, David, did you, uh, you did these, right? So this one would be. The 15. <laughs> Uh, 15, oh, for sure, yes, that's 15, mm -hmm. and looks like this one is two. And switch it up, no, motivate students. Yeah, is that's the it. Yep. Got it, okay. Any surprises here? No. Okay. I think, again, if you were looking to combine, you could, like, the first one and the like involving students in their decision making and um, students having a role in determining what success looks like um, and even how to you know motivate students is kind of all connected. Mm. Okay. I would agree with that. Okay. That's my, that's my note. Come on, fingers. Got it. Okay. Any surprises on this one? Feed them well. <laughs> Periodic <laughs> movement. You can see this, this kind of a trend, but uh, mm -hmm. recess continues, movement, exercise. And I can see across different uh, form categories that 
there would be some mergers and acquisitions there. Yeah, I'm, I'm wondering if we can go to the, um, I think Create Student Advisory Panel had 31. Um, no, yes. Um, we know- No, it had 48. Okay, sorry. Yeah. So which one then provide periodic movement? I just feel like feeding them well is sort of a given. So in terms of ranking, like, yes, it is a very high priority. We know that hungry kids don't learn well, but we have processes in place to feed them well, and we're going to continue to do that. So I'd rather use our ranking to get at things where we can be more goal oriented and, yeah. and make a plan. Okay. Got it. Can I, I open up that triangle on that one? The fact that some teachers don't actually like students to eat in their classroom. Oh. And some, some teachers do. So I just want to speak up for that. It doesn't need to change what Lisa just said. Um, but um, some teachers can tolerate the constant eating and some cannot. And so that just might need a, like a little purple flag somewhere else. And I think we also need to think about, it's not just feeding them at school, it's um, mm -hmm. helping parents understand what healthy balanced options there are for their kids that are affordable, because I still see students of limited means coming in with food uh, that's been packed at home that is um, just not adequate, or in other cases, some, some families who don't want to accept the free food from school as a point of pride. So we need to I think do a little bit of outreach in terms of helping parents feed their kids well, not just feeding them well ourselves at school. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think that's a really good point. Thank it, you. It also speaks a little bit to um, the need to make sure that your lunch time actually allows, and I don't, I, no, I'm not there, right? <laughs> Them, the time that they need to eat and socialize because you know you know that um, kids who are stressed in, in situations are they're not flying around, they have six minutes to eat, they're not fed kids, you know, they're, they're kids who throw their food in the garbage. And, and that's a really yeah. valid point, even at the elementary age, I get that feedback from my kids coming home with, you know, full lunch boxes, not having had time because they obviously want to take advantage of socializing and they need to learn that. But I think it's a valid thing that's kind of almost needs to be taught along the way. Mm -hmm. Yes, and an additional issue, which might just be isolated to my own classroom, um, is that on Thursdays, we order our breakfast and lunches for Friday, but unless they're delivered into my classroom, we don't actually get the food that's prepared for us because we are like 30 feet away and out of sight of wherever they may have been left. Um, and we depart a door that doesn't cross that path. so. The whole feeding thing is actually a really important issue, perhaps not for this grid, but it just is really important. Well, how, hmm, what, what should we say about that? To classroom? Well, I, I have a special arrangement where it's supposed to be delivered into my classroom but that's just me, but that doesn't change it for other people. Other classes, they happen to walk past the cart where it's sitting on, so they grab it as they go. It's it's kind of a haphazard, I think, a little bit, okay. uh, to, but it, we're doing it to the best of our ability. I am not criticizing. I'm just it's, saying that we can't consistently promise that the kids get the food they always ordered because of other things. Okay. As a category, should it be moved up to two where we're dealing with students' physical, emotional, and mm -hmm. just add, you know, dump it up there and yeah. kind of include it somehow? Because yeah. then, then we can all be happy. It's not here, but it's someplace. I think that's a great idea. We're going somewhere. <laughs> right. Okay. I'm going to say move to number two. Number two. Got it. Got it. Okay. All right, moving on. We've got some facility needs, and it looks like teachers model positive attitudes, ensure culture of inclusion, and establish physical boundaries. Here, here again is the separate middle school entrance. 
Any thoughts on this? Is it does it meet um, kind of the standards for how we're reviewing this, or did we miss something? Well, we definitely seem to pick that up. I'm still just flabbergasted by that fear of the older students, and I feel bad for the older students. Like, there's nothing. It, it's almost as if the parents of the younger students feel like these. There, there are these dangerous teenagers wandering around in the high school. And it's like, they're still our children. They grow and they're okay. And I, I don't know, it's just, it's really interesting. The, the, this desire to really keep them separate. But well, it's yeah. a different parenting. Yeah. And just note that 12 and 13 year olds may actually be super intimidated by uh, physical affection between the older kids, the vaping between older kids, the language between older kids. So that exposure is so incredibly intimidating. They actually don't even know how to function through it, which no. I think might be why parents want it separate. So their kids can actually develop on their own path as opposed to just being bombarded with the language and behavior of the older kids, which has, you know, in actual effect, been largely acceptable. So I think those like 12 and 13, like, and I teach 10, 11 and 12, um, they are just kind of like, whoa, what is that? And it freaks them out more than a little bit sometimes. Yeah. Well, I heard quite a, quite a bit about the, the mixed bathrooms, and I also heard that elementary uh, teachers uh, scare, scare the dickens out of elementary kids that when they go to that, that uh, big bad middle school, and then I heard students say, and when we got there, it wasn't as bad, and the workload wasn't as tough, and so it was good to have the student perspective in this. Mm -hmm. Right, I think it's like, again to have middle school students um, feel some ownership over over their school and, and making the middle school kind of its own its own school and not not because the high school is bad or anything else, but just because you know it's such an impressionable time and just that you know they have their own entrances right now because of COVID and it's just so much smoother. I think. I mean, I wasn't there last year, but just because there's there's physically less kids that there's you know they're smaller. It just it, it makes it just a little bit easier to for everybody to kind of monitor what's going on and check in with with these kids who need it so badly and so i do hear what you're saying and i kind of like i i do feel that like oh we're not trying to be like high schoolers are so bad and in fact mentoring could be so powerful that's why like i don't know if the wall necessarily like a, the wall needs to happen but having the middle school have their own space where they can just like feel like they are comfortable that they belong there and aren't trying to sort of always check because middle school kids, they change so much when the high schoolers are around. Like, it's that, you know, it's the middle school kids who change. And they just kind of they clam up, and they're just not as open with us when there's 12th graders walking in and out of the back entrance or whatever. So that's kind of what I feel like it's coming from, in some sense, at least from the teacher standpoint. Okay. I don't think we're looking at turning these two schools into separate fortresses, but I think that by, by establishing a... Um, a mental separation between the two schools, at least, then the then we get to control the interactions between those two age groups. Whereas if we've got everyone from you know twelve years old to eighteen years old using the same bathroom, there's a lot of quite damaging interactions that could happen that we could, we have no control or say over. So I think um, I, I think there's kind of a, a halfway between these two things. We certainly don't have to separate the two schools with a wall, but certainly knowing which part of the school is the middle and which part is high. And and certainly uh, separating facilities for those two, um, I mean that's that's the, the kind of feedback I I feel I've been getting from parents uh, of my sixth graders, um, and we're not trying to intimidate them by the way about middle school. So if that's been happening, then I think we need to we need to re-examine what we're saying to our sixth graders. Well, I also heard um, it might have been from high school teachers that. Apparently, middle school teachers, when they come back from recess, sometimes are disruptive for high school student learning that's going on. That there needs to be a way that students, middle school, middle school students, can re-enter uh, more peacefully. So there's two, two two sides to that coin. We're working on it. Okay. All right. Let's move on to activities. Dave, David wanted to say something. Okay. Go ahead. 
So I, I, I think I think it's concerning that that we that we we sh I think we should stop having a culture of sixth grade is for getting you ready for seventh grade and yeah. eighth grade's get getting you ready for ninth grade. It's like this is a continuity of education and no step between grades should be any more difficult than another developmentally. It should just be. And next year you're going to be in seventh grade, and it's going to be in a different place. But but it's just, it's seventh grade, and and I think that that's the culture we should be teaching in the same way that that the ninth grade teacher shouldn't look at the eighth grade teachers like you didn't prepare these kids for for the tough ninth grade. I I think it's really everyone should be in this together, preparing kids just for the that that literally this what they need to know to just keep growing. Mm -hmm. I think we can't escape, um, David, I completely agree with you, but I, I don't think we can escape the fact that from an elementary school to a middle school, you've got kids who've been going to the same school since before they can remember, um, going to a new school in a new town in a lot of cases. Um, so I think just that in and of itself is intimidating, not not that we're saying, you know, this whole year is about preparing for seventh grade, but just they know that step is coming and it's the first time they've ever remembered having to leave anything. Um, so I think it's worth bearing that in mind. We certainly shouldn't exacerbate it in any way, um, but we should acknowledge that it is a big shift whether we want it to be or not. Yeah. Okay. I think this is where too, we can really do well with building relationships, kind of like Kelsey was saying, like the, the walls help to create a unity for the middle school, but it doesn't mean that you still can't have regular interaction with high school to middle school and middle school to elementary. Um, both as mentorships and just as building friendships. I mean, you know, kids in eighth grade can be friends with kids in ninth grade and kids in ninth grade can be friends with with younger kids because they have younger siblings. So I think it's just important to recognize that kind of almost going back to that community of, you know, we're a union high school. And so it's important that all grade levels are are being mixed in. Um, my daughter is in elementary school and the last two weeks, everything she's talked about is the stuff they're doing with the fifth and sixth graders right now at the school and how cool it is that, that they're doing stuff together and she's just been you know beside herself and I think that could continue and then you get rid of some of those barriers too even though there might be physical barriers you're still supporting the emotional groups together or even clubs you know maybe there could be some interactions and stuff yeah we heard quite a bit about uh, class activities about mentoring relationships about reading buddies there's just a lot of ways that that can happen so this is very good conversation here Let's move on to activities. And the biggies were recognized student accomplishments. And okay, so I'm pausing for a hot second. So this is the section I had some initial questions about because yeah. I I have no idea what Gracie Hill is, and I think the stations is actually what we meant by sixth grade challenge. So I think when we all like ranked it, we might not have been looking at what we thought we were looking at. What is Gracie Hill? I don't know. I think you meant Braintree Hill. And if that's oh. Braintree Hill, that's the same as stations and the same as sixth grade challenge. Those three oh. things are the same thing. Got it. It's the same event. Okay, got it. Sixth grade challenge was like on Braintree Hill with stations, with community support, was like <laughs> a super amazing connecting event. Um where we could, we made groups of kids from Braintree, Brookfield, Randolph, and separated all friendships and separated genders and homerooms and all these things. I and they did problem solving. And it was absolutely amazing. So the kids all had opportunities to get to know each other, interact with each other before they went to seventh grade. And it was a pretty, like we all felt for years, it was a pretty crucial activity. It doesn't have to be the only one. And there can be other types of things. But it was pretty amazing. Okay. So I just wanted to mention that when I saw that list, I'm like, how did, how did that get separated like it did? Because I don't know what that was. It might have been just me not knowing the context. And I just did it verbatim as separate yeah. bullets yeah. when it should have been together. So I'll take ownership on that. <laughs> Total agreement on that with Gus. I want to add a, a, a super backup to that because I only got to experience sixth grade challenge once. It was my first year here. The class I had was particularly challenging and I saw things come out of these kids, enthusiasm, stuff I hadn't seen all year. Um, yeah. And I was very, very sad to see it dropped. Yeah. And the connections and friendships they built on that one day up in the woods at Braintree Hill continued on 
towards seventh grade. It was really the one thing we ever had that connected everyone before they actually got there. It was really great. Does, does anyone know why it was stopped? Uh, my understanding is the organizer at my school um, left our school and it kind of was just sort of left floating. I'm not really sure what happened after that. We had a cabinet level discussion about it uh, a couple of years back um, in terms of transitioning and whether this was really an effective tool for what the transition goals were. Um, the primary concerns out of it was um, location you know should it be located over at the high school does that make more sense if that's where they're transitioning to um the actual activities that were set up didn't really do the job of getting as many kids from different schools together right they were assigned in like three person teams you know one person from each school so if the primary goal of it was to really get them engaged and get to connect with as many different students that they've never connected with before it kind of failed miserably at that um, the activities were valuable, uh, but we also talked at the time about potentially changing those um, to activities that were more capstone projects for the foundational knowledge that the students were expected to be coming away from their elementary schools with. And that's kind of where it got stalled um, in terms of the conversation piece. Um, yeah. I feel like there's some things though that were uh, baked into it that are just they're just such unique experiences that the kids would have got to have otherwise some of the the community members we spoke to when we did the forums mentioned it specifically they missed it they wondered where it had gone um, a lot of the kids got exposed to people and skills and careers that they just didn't know exist it had such a huge impact so I hear what you're saying Lane but at the same time I, I think setting aside that one day there's lots of just hidden benefits and it's and it's such a powerful day i'd love yeah to the intent was before. never to do away with it permanently it was an odd year that year when we had the discussion the intent was to revisit it and get it back going up and running the next year which didn't happen um so one of the things is i'm glad i would keep that in this document um because there was a lot of good parts and pieces to what they were doing it just needed to be restructured a little bit to meet the vision that it was intended and we literally should get a paid coordinator who was actually doing it um you know that would be you know if this is a priority out of the strategic plan and i think it's a good one um get it in there and that way i've got a means to prioritize it in the budget process get an actual person who is dedicated to this and probably um to the larger kind of transition process that we're talking about here um, to make sure that it's it's effective and smooth. So yeah, no, definitely, I think it's a very good idea, but it was never intended to go away forever. Yeah, okay. Lynn, I appreciate what you're saying. Those three person teams were actually combined. So each team was actually a six person team, um, but I do appreciate that the, all the stations could have been far more aligned with actual seventh grade initiatives, which might have made it really more targeted. It would have been great. But the whole behavior analysis and combination of kids was very strategic. And I was actually the one that made the groupings for about six or eight years. And it was just, it was an amazing experience. And I would really love it to take on a whole new level. So I'm yeah. glad that it's still here. But, but part of the discussion that we're having with Winton and the strategic planning is identifying that as a priority because then it's real easy to go and say, hey, we need the resources to do this right. And this is what it's going to take. And what that program really needs, especially combined, at least if I'm looking at it from an operational standpoint, um, is that this is potentially a position for kind of a transition coordinator. You know. So. Uh, another thing just about the location, while I appreciate that they're not transitioning to Braintree Hill, they're transitioning to Randolph, um, the nice thing about having it on that kind of neutral ground, as it were, was the kids all relaxed. They don't feel like they're at school. They're able to get into it and really focus on uh, the socialization and the activities, not the in possibly intimidating environment of the new school. Yeah, no, all, all good pieces that, that, you know, would need to be incorporated into kind of a new plan. Okay. Wow, great conversation. Let us move on. Uh, I think we've already talked about this one. Have we caught up now? Seems so. I think we did. And did we finish it? 
we did the transitions. We did the transition relationship building. Do we do middle school to high school? I don't think we did. We finished with uh, challenge career day for female students. So I'm not sure we did middle school to high school, but that's the last of it. So any, any thoughts here? I was intrigued by seniors talk with eighth graders about middle school portfolio defense and how it links with senior project. Uh, I remember when that came out of one of the forums and I thought that was a great relationship builder and context establisher. I do think over the years, the middle and high school have done some amazing jobs with creating projects that lead up to the senior project. And to have someone up in that, the senior level speak to the younger kids just starting the process would be absolutely amazing. Yep. Yep. Agreed. Okay. Anything that this quantitative analysis didn't address? Any thoughts that have emerged in your mind um, as a result of the conversations that we've had? Okay. So let me take a look at the qualitative side. Uh, we've, been, <laughs> we've done a little chunking here. Uh, is there any, any streamlining given all that conversation we had uh, quantitatively? What are you thinking about the curriculum, the transition, uh, culture? facilities and culture, diversity. Well, again, this is speaking to what Richard said earlier. If you scroll up to the very top about curriculum, having you know the increased workload in bold, again, that wasn't something that was bolded on our, on our spreadsheet. And I just feel like that's, it seems very specific, I guess. And I kind of feel like that came from, like David said that in our form, that that's what he would, as he was hoping for as a parent, but is that really how like everybody in the whole district feels? And like what David Roller said about that eighth grade is, or our job is not to be like, in high school you do this, in college you do like, our job is to teach eighth grade right here and now and the kids that we have in front of us and to adapt the workload to the kids that we have. And yes, prepare them, but not by just necessarily like adding on more homework and more, you know, I don't know. I just wonder about that one a little bit, that if it needs to be like a bolded subcategory of curriculum. Okay. I don't, I don't know. Well, again, I heard from the students, elementary teachers getting students ready for uh, the rigors of middle school. And then the kids saying, and we thought we were going to have a ton of homework and didn't know how we could do it. And then they said, and then we didn't have homework. So that it might have come from there. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess just in terms of process, I do wonder about taking the time to go rank everything and then processing those rankings as a group. And then it feels like we're shifting to some things that we didn't bold and we didn't, didn't discuss. Okay. Um, yeah. So that feels hard after spending that time. Okay. To make Fair that enough. Work. All right. Let me just ask the question in a different way. Did these look like, you know, this aside, uh, that we would have a curriculum umbrella, that we might have a transition umbrella, we might have a culture umbrella, given the conversations we had. Uh, I didn't hear a lot about diversity. What are your thoughts there? That sort of goes under curriculum for me. Um, Do others... Uh, Others agree under with that. Curriculum and under and under uh, the the life skills, you know, learning how to be a global citizen, recognizing that yes, you may live in Vermont where it's the majority white culture, but you come from a country that's made up of people from a lot of different places, um, and so it can kind of be, I think, subsumed under that. 
Okay. I think the culture of inclusion uh, covers that as well. And I, if, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, anybody, I feel like we bolded that in at least one place in the quantitative analysis. Okay. This is probably enough for now. So as I, as I process the quantitative and align it with the, uh, with the qualitative, um, I'll, I'll try to, I'll try, uh, I don't want to say this. I'll try to make the right decisions and when we come back again next week, I'll have a working model that you can either tear apart or say, most of it's right or it's all right or it's all wrong. So does that make sense to take it to, to the next level? Because we've got about 10 minutes left tonight and I've got a couple of other things that I just need your need your feedback on. Does that seem workable? Wait, no. Okay. Let me, uh, let me say that for next week's uh, design team meeting, if you could uh, finish up uh, the assessment here on the high school forum synopsis, uh, I'll make sure that I don't mess it up with you know, doing some cutting and pasting that shifts all of this. We'll go through that uh, for next week with high school. And let me go to the agenda just to see how we're doing. Um, I'll also come to you next time with survey questions, because if you recall, we were going to wait until we had the middle school and the high school uh, forums complete, and then to extract survey questions from there. So I'll have that uh, for the 22nd. A mission statements, uh, either Lisa, David, or Lane, can you just give the design team a little bit of overview on how the habits of heart, mind, and work uh, are integrated within the curriculum? Just a couple of minutes, just as an overview. I wanna make sure everyone is, is familiar with how they work. Yeah, so the habits of heart, mind, and work are essentially the transferable skills that the um, AOE referred to when they were making, when, when Act 77 went through. So there was guidance that indicated that in proficiency-based learning, you separate out those habits of heart, mind, and work. So the habits of work are essentially organization product and productivity. Habits of mind are like critical thinking, problem solving, and habits of heart are taking responsibility for your own actions, showing respect and care for other people. Um, and so those are assessed separately. So in other words, like when I was a high school student, if I handed in a paper late, um, that paper might lose points every day that it was handed in late. Um, under this system, the paper is assessed on the qualities in the paper that are on the rubric, but your habits of work, in other words, your productivity, your organization, would take a hit and it would really articulately communicate the areas that you were strong in and the areas that you needed to grow in. Okay. Yeah. And we can, um, I, I think that the middle school and high school has actually done a really good job of whittling down those habits to a workable number, which is something that the elementary schools have not. We're still working for essentially with the original set and um, and not in uh, as direct a way as the middle high school is. Okay. But we do have really nice rubrics that were created, which is helpful. <laughs> there you go. All right. Well, I think, uh, I think this is probably plenty of work for tonight. This was, this was hard work, but good work. And it was very, very fine conversations. So because of good behavior, I'm gonna let you go six minutes early if that's okay. And we'll see you then on the 22nd, I think it is at 6.30. I'll be sending you uh, more documents and please weigh in on the high school uh, components from the forums. And I'll have that uh, prepared for you uh, more in advance than I did this time. I underestimated how much time it took to actually do that, that synthesis. 
So with that, uh, almost welcome to spring. Thank you very much. Good to see you all. See you next week. Bye-bye.